All right, all right, all right, here we go. Welcome back to the big board. Let's have a look at combat infantry and have a quick chat about it. I, I don't have a lot of comments to, uh, to share here because I've played uh, Hell's Beach once and I'm part of the way through second time here. And there, there's, I I'm, guess I'm having some disconnects here with uh, some aspects of the system. So let's look at this from the perspective of what's really good about it. And let's kind of talk about that. And let's talk about where my disconnects might be coming from and based on my gameplay history. And then we'll leave it at that. Uh, so interesting maps and map art. I think I've already discussed the value for money issue that uh, is a, a recurring theme for me, but in particular for this module, I, I find it to be expensive for what you get. Setting aside scale of company, number of employees, how many units they make, all the rest of it, this is an expensive game for what you get. And we can argue about that as all, all you like. I already got a whole ration of commentary and uh, private messages about this already, people being fairly, you know, banal and mean-spirited about all that sort of stuff. That's your opinion. You can take your opinion and do what you want to do with it. I have my opinion. It's my blog. It's what I think. So besides the fact that uh, the, the value for money thing, let's have a look at the components. The components are nice. Like I said, the map's nice. The map artwork is interesting. It's got big hexes. You need the big hexes because you've got big blocks, right? The artwork on the blocks, when you actually zoom in and have a little look at them, they're very uh, fetching to the eye. The uh, I imagine if you looked at these on big screen, they'd be gorgeous, right? So uh, it all kind of tends to kind of wash out a little bit when you've got a whole bunch of them. You know, you've got a, a company of guys like this here. All These are all in this hex here. But, uh, well, not all of them because there's four. But uh, anyway, you'll have these dudes... Uh, you know, all standing up, and so you don't really see too much of them, but you do get to have have a good look at them every now and then. So, uh, in, in some ways, the art, the beautiful artwork is sort of sort of blocked by the uh, by the blocks, uh, vehicles, artillery, uh, off board action, air, and all that sort of good stuff falls a factor in the game. Uh, the game. So I, so I like the artwork. The stickers, uh, they're really kind of a one and done. You've got to get them on right pretty much the first time. Uh, they're also not waterproof. I know there are some companies that do some of the latex style uh, stickers that, that help them be a little more resilient. And also you can sometimes, some companies that make those stickers, you can kind of peel, you get it on there and you kind of made a mistake, you can peel it off. I actually, uh, actually dropped one of the stickers on the on uh, the, the rest of the stickers and it took me uh, a very delicate two or three minutes to peel that away without peeling the, the ink off the other sticker that it fell on. Clumsy me. Uh, there are a couple of things you've got to keep track of in the game when you're trying to shoot through a hedgerow or if you drive tanks through a hedgerow in particular, it's going to make a gap and that gap's going to be permanent for the scenario, so that's going to improve your line of sight. So you'll be able to, you know, shoot up the road here or down the road here, as the case may be, uh, go on point to point. It's a little weird having line of sight with the art the way it is on the on the hexes and uh, and, and the scale. So that's kind of funky because uh, you've got these kind of busy hexes with two or three dudes in them. So anyway, what are we dealing with here? What we're dealing with with combat infantry is basically a company of units. So you'll have a company headquarters. That's a platoon headquarters. Where, is, where did I put that? Here's the company HQ here. And you have three platoon headquarters and three platoons of units plus battalion assets attached. And those assets are typically randomly drawn from a bag or a cup or whatever the case may be, which adds a lot of variety. So the fact that you only get seven, or there are only seven, uh, seven, there are only six uh, scenarios in the game. Each one's probably going to play out a little bit differently because of the assets you're going to you're going to pull, uh, based on what I can tell. So that's that's kind of 
an interesting way to generate some variety with a smaller set of scenario so that's quite quite clever so you're really sitting pretty firmly in the role of uh, i would call this in the role of battalion uh, yeah uh, sorry company commander and then you've got your individual platoons that then you're going to be directing and they're all going to be within a certain range of your hq and stuff like that or you make a morale role and then if you make it you can go or toddle off and do your own little thing uh Objectives are pretty standard, you know, capture the bridge, capture the village, kill the most guys, whoever gets the most kills wins type of thing. So it's all pretty standard for this scale of game. Now, one of the reasons why I was curious about this game is that there are very, very few platoon scale games. And if you look at these, these platoons, they are, uh, where is this guy? I'm putting up the full strength. You know, they're four steps, right? So... So the, the the argument here is that I've got uh, you know three squads, two squads, one squad, no squads, uh, and that's that's the number of squads that are going to go into a platoon. So I've got rather than having three counters, whatever the case may be, I've got a platoon of guys, and we're going to go off and, and fight battles with a platoon of units, and they'll be degraded over time. Now the cool thing is. When you take uh, take a loss, uh, you know you spread your losses across, just like any you know a standard block game, right? Uh, you're using a d10 to hit here versus a uh, a d6, so don't freak out when you see um, twos and sevens like this, right? Because you got to roll seven or less uh, to hit with that guy, uh, two or less with this guy, three or less with this guy, that type of thing. Um, and uh, when you, but when you take losses, uh, you can your next action, your next phase, your next activation, you can uh, you can conduct a rally and try and rebuild a unit, right? And uh, add a add a strength step back to him. So each activation you get, you're doing one of two or three things. You're either rallying, moving, or or, or firing, as the case may be. So that kind of gives you a a little bit of granularity in terms of recovering from combat. So you've maybe, while while you've dropped from a four to a three, you haven't lost a third of your forces. What you're doing is seeing a suppression of those forces and then they're kind of like stragglers. They're going to catch up with you or get back in the fight or be more effective in the fight as you, uh, as you uh, take time to rally. That's not so good for you, however, if you're beat up on by by three platoons of force and you have one platoon of force, you're probably going to get three hits on you and you're probably going to be dead and you ain't coming back. So there is that to be considered. Uh, I found massing force and massing guns uh, onto a single unit to be a very effective way to clear a hex. Uh, haven't worked out really a good way of assaulting yet when there's more than one unit in a hex clearly some suppressing fire first does a little bit of help because it, it'll knock them down a step or two perhaps or put some hits on them because uh, sometimes in in city hexes like these here uh, you've got to take two hits to earn one hit if that makes sense that's why I've been using little cubes to kind of keep track of stuff because when you roll a whole bunch of dice uh, it gets a little confusing as to how many hits is on this and how many hits is on that and is that half a hit or two hits, whatever the case may be. And I fired first and then I moved I moved some other guys into a close assault and got to keep track of all that. So I use little cubes to keep track of the, the hits. So there's some there's some good, you know, uh, potential usage of tactics at this kind of platoon scale. And because there are not very many platoon scale games, uh, it's a little unique. Now, the only other game that I know of that's platoon scale and relatively popular and has, you know, uh, a relatively large following, although the company that produces it is trying to kill it off or, or has killed it off, basically, is TCS, is the Tactical Combat System. And it has, obviously, a much different scale, right? So, uh, you know, it's uh, battalions and battalions of forces fighting each other. Inter interestingly enough, though, you need it so it's platoon scale. So each base unit is a platoon, and there are machines, gun squads, and sections and stuff like that. So kind of like here, right? 
uh, each hex is almost equivalent as well. This, these hexes here in this game are 100 meters, which is uh, 100 meters, which is 100 meters, and these hexes are 115 or 114 meters, so it's about the same scale. Uh, and I wonder, you know, I wondered if you if you translated these sort of mechanics here onto this map what the gameplay effect would be and and if the ranges i haven't taken the time to look at the comparative ranges and capabilities on the of the tanks over on the tcs system and the, the gunfire and, and capabilities and all the rest of it but they feel very very different and this feels m much much more abstract and it is much more abstract you know tcs is a very detailed game right that's excluding the orders system it's a very detailed game it's a very straightforward game once you know what you're doing, but it is a very a much more detailed game. And I and I feel like there could be, you know, like some extra optional rules if there had to be an extra, extra optional rules here to kind of give more flavor. That might have been nice to kind of get a get a better handle on, on what's going on at the platoon level here. So there's that historical narrative. I, I mean, there's these divisions and things but and the battalion numbers but all the all this is abstracted out here right a, a platoon is a platoon a company's a company plus some random elements added into for the um the technical side of things the uh, you know the, the support weapons and stuff like that all right uh general narrative is fine i think you know you get a little bit of a story coming out of this thing and uh the, you'll get a higher replay value here comes the trash collector man and it's going to make the dog start barking, so I'm going to have to stop for a second. Probably. Let's see what happens. And playtime's fast. This is a fast player. Uh, you've only got seven turns, and there'll be a handful of activations for, you know, each each, each formation's going to activate. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can keep going now. Yeah, I've moved on a little bit. Right, where were we? I think we were talking about uh, components and playtime, uh, uh, relatively quick playtime and a fair amount of play uh, replayability here. S rules in terms of digestibility, uh, pretty good, right? It's the classic eight page uh, set of rules from Columbia, pretty terse, but uh, everything's pretty, uh, pretty much explained fairly well. So uh, I had to stop again because the, the dogs. <laughs> uh, where were we? Okay, so the rules are clear and well laid out. There are just some concepts in here that are a little confusing, like line of sight. Um, you're, you're paying for movement across hex sides, not moving into the hex. Uh, firing is pretty straightforward, although there are a number, of, there are limits to how you uh, how you can do certain things with uh, firing. I didn't get into special actions very much in terms of foxhole construction or pop and smoke and stuff like that. Um, and assaults are pretty pretty deadly, as you can well imagine. And there are actually some little uh, guidelines for a solitaire play, and I'm gonna go go from there. Now it also has a little uh, uh, sort of price sheet for unit values, so that you can construct scenarios uh, for yourself. Okay, so I, I'm you know while I had the camera on pause, I was trying to think. There's a game that I've played that is similar in style and function to this that wasn't a block game. And, I, and for the life of me, I can't think of the name or the company that it's made by. But here's, here's look, here's the thing. I, I guess if uh, I freed my mind and, uh, uh, you know, I could say, oh, well, look, you know, the, the morales of the units represent uh, so many different things and there's so much nuance, although there's kind of a pretty tight range. Everything's pretty much a four or a five on, uh, on morale. Uh, the firepower capabilities of the units, uh, we, you know, we could free our minds around there and just let the narrative kind of explode out of it. I'm not getting there with this, uh, but by the same token, I wasn't getting there with uh, ASL Starter Kit either. I, I I thought there was way too much w work trying to get through 
a really shittily developed rule book there to take a simple game and a relatively simple system and enjoy it. Here, I, I'm feeling a little, you know, these are all the, there's the map size, right? There's a lot of stuff on this little map and they've got these big hexes with the kind of funky line of sight things going on. And I keep, you know, unfortunately, I keep comparing it back to the TCS scale stuff that's also platoon level and is a richer, deeper experience. So, so I, I struggle with it. Where I think this game will shine is for the cafe. You want to roll into the cafe, set this up. It's nice and small and compact. You can sit down. You can knock out a game in an hour or less, probably. Uh, it's going to give you enough game tension with both sides having the, the units up. You don't know who's who or where's what's what. Uh, that I think you'll, you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. There'll be some die rolling and some laughing and you'll have a good time. Uh, obviously, if you are looking for a richer, more nuanced tactical system, this ain't your game, right? Yeah, you, you know, I, I think this kind of, uh, in some ways, uh, you know, Nations at War is another platoon scale game that, that while it's interesting, it's funny, I like World at War, the World War Three stuff. But I've never really got super excited about Nations at War from Lock and Load. You know, I, I, so, so it's funny. This, this game kind of feels like that to me. It's like, I could play it. I'll sit down and play it. If someone wanted to play it, I would play it. And, and if that was going to get them into war gaming, then I'd be all over it like, a, you know, like white on rice. But uh, I don't know that this is something that I would pull out because I want to play a game solo or, or here, let's go play this game. There are other games I'd probably be my go-to at the calling this tactical scale right just because of the size of the maps and the fact that we're really only dealing with a company each uh, versus maybe a battalion so it's not grand tactical uh, so you know i think it's got a lot going for it and it's clean and simple and straightforward but as a starter game well once again i roll back to the value for money thing it's expensive for 70 bucks i just don't feel like i'm getting a lot of stuff and uh that's not my fault you don't have the production scale or the contacts to get the blocks cheaper or make the art, get the art done or get the maps made or make a decent box. That's not my fault. So I don't know why I should be penalized by you paying $70 a pop. And I think the, the, I think the Kickstarters from Columbia, if they've done any, or maybe that's Worthington, so we should leave that alone. We'll leave that alone. Let's call it a $70 game. It is what it is. Uh, they do have money back guarantee. So if you play it, you don't like it, you can send it back. Uh, I won't be sending this back. I'm going to do a giveaway. We'll give this away on the blog or on the Facebook page or on the Twitter page. So stay tuned if you want to try it out. You're getting the running. And we'll see if uh, you'll, you'll enjoy it as much or more as I did. So... This is uh, Combat Infantry from Columbia Games. And uh, all the best. We'll talk to you soon.